Modern authentication refers to the latest, newest, contemporary authentication methods and protocols that are designed to ensure secure authentication in a cloud-based world. But what makes it modern and what differentiates it from the previous authentication methods? In this video, I will explain you how the industry has evolved to use what we now call modern authentication, including the basic business needs that drove the change, as well as the foundational concepts that make up modern authentication. Meet John. The year is 2002, and John runs a firm called Contoso, based out of a single office in Florida. John's employees come to work every day, and they log into their Windows desktops every morning to do things such as process the company's inventory of raw materials, keep on top of orders, check emails, access file shares, etc. Contoso's employees can log into the Contoso domain and access HR systems, email, and various other systems with a single password and login. This is because John had the foresight to invest in a Windows 2000 based Active Directory that under the covers uses a protocol called Kerberos to authenticate users. Kerberos is an authentication protocol that works between a client and a domain controller on a shared network. The client requests and is granted tickets, which it then uses to request to secure resources via session keys. Kerberos allows John to manage users' machines and profiles in a convenient and centralized way as his business grows. Fast forward to 2005. John has decided to open a new office location in California, and he wants to ensure that his employees in California are on an equal footing. They should have the same convenient access to the same systems as the employees in Florida do, and Contoso should be able to manage the user profiles and machines of the remote office easily. Because John invested in the Microsoft ecosystem, he can use technology such as VPN to ease the transition. The VPN allows John to redirect the internet traffic of his remote office so that it acts as though it is a part of the original office network. As a side benefit, of course, John's employees can now occasionally work from home because using the VPN allows them access to the resources that they need to do their job regardless of their location. The year is now 2010. Contoso has grown significantly, but the world is undergoing a digital transformation that has brought forth a new set of challenges. There is constant pressure to reduce costs, expand the business, work with new customers and partners. At the same time, the world has moved to the cloud. Customers, partners, and employees expect to access the resources they need from Contoso anywhere, at any time. John's pure on-premises infrastructure is not scaling well. To this modern mechanism of working, he needs a new solution that will enable collaboration with partners outside his company, allow remote access from a variety of devices, use popular SaaS software as a service offerings, and derive benefits of moving his applications to the cloud and reduce cost. So before we discuss a solution that does work, it's worth asking the question, why do established protocols such as NTLM or Kerberos not work in this new cloud-based world? The protocol used by NTLM requires point-to-point -point communication between a client and a server. The server must have prior knowledge of an encrypted form of the user's credentials. To enable access to remote users with NTLM, the authentication servers must be able to securely forward and quickly onboard identities to and from one another. This takes a lot of engineering overhead on all parties involved. It can be done, but it takes a lot of work to build and maintain a secure solution. Similarly, Kerberos protocol relies on a central entity to issue and validate tickets. 
It works very well when you're able to rely on one central source of truth on a single network. However, it is also incredibly chatty, meaning there are lots of messages being sent back and forth between the client and server. Using Kerberos to authenticate users who are not on the local network requires complicated handshakes and setup ahead of time to ensure all that communication can happen securely. It takes a lot of effort to maintain a system like this. What about VPNs? While VPNs can extend the boundaries of the office, they were never designed to connect two or more offices or companies with each other. It takes engineering effort to keep the VPN connection stable. And just connecting two networks does not result in a secure and compliant identity and access management solution. Finally, it is just plain difficult to maintain a secure network. Bad actors are constantly upping their game and network breaches are a constant threat. It takes a lot of work to maintain a secure system and stay one step ahead of external threats. And this engineering overhead must be factored in as well. It's clear that these older authentication methods were not built with a cloud-based internet first world in mind. A new solution was needed. And this is why modern authentication protocols were developed. Modern authentication generally refers to protocols that scale to the size of the internet. They can be used to provide secure access to partners, devices, and customers that are outside the corporate network, and to ensure that those within the boundaries of the corporate network are authorized to access the resources they request. They all share certain characteristics that allow them to do this. They have a clear definition of the identity provider who provides authentication services and the service provider or relying party, which is the application that needs to verify the user's identity before granting access to secure resources. Here's the best part. The application is now no longer concerned with managing user credentials and the interaction between a user and the identity provider. Less responsibility is good. The separation of interaction between apps and the identity provider means organizations can now adopt various new means of authentication, example MFA or passwordless, without changing anything in the apps themselves. Another characteristic they share is that they all rely on claims. Claims are assertions that define characteristics of the user or process that has been authenticated. For example, the time that the user last authenticated or their email address. These are characteristics of the user. To keep these claims safe, these protocols have mechanisms built into them to verify that their values haven't been tempered with or snooped on. Finally, they're stateless. This means that the identity provider never remembers which relying party a given authentication request was for, and the relying party doesn't remember that it requested an identity provider to perform the authentication. The responsibility of state is pushed down to the user's machine, either via session or a cookie or a token. What are some modern important authentication protocols. Modern authentication doesn't have an industry accepted definition, but for the purposes of this discussion, it includes some of the following protocols, WSFED, SAML, OAuth, and OpenID Connect. Of these, WSFED and SAML are a bit older, and OAuth and OpenID Connect came after let us get a high-level understanding of each of these. WSFED or SAML were initially designed for web-based applications, although with some arm twisting, they can work on other platforms as well. At the end of the day, they're built on HTTP redirects. The user's browser sends an anonymous request to a relying party, also known as a service provider. The service provider says, to get you access, you need to authenticate and here are the identity providers I trust. 
The user then picks the identity provider of their choice or a choice is made for them automatically based on a condition. This process is called Home Realm Discovery or HRD for short. The user then provides their credentials to the identity provider and claims are posted back to the service provider, usually as a post request. Now, without going into a lot of details, let me just say two things. There is some flexibility in what claims are issued and who initiates the request. At the end of the day, when the user is logged in, it boils down to a web-based session between the user's browser and the service provider server. There is one other important thing I must mention. SAML is both a token format and an authentication protocol. WSFED issues SAML 1.1 tokens and SAML authentication protocol uses SAML 2.0 tokens. Now let's talk about OAuth. OAuth is not an authentication protocol. It is a delegation protocol, but it is being widely used as a pseudo authentication protocol. Let's understand this. Imagine that I'm browsing some news website on the internet. I run into an article that I clearly disagree with and I must share my valuable opinion for the world to see. However, the news website will not just let me leave a comment. They want me to prove my identity first, usually as a social login or similar. So I go ahead and click on login using social provider and I'm redirected to the social provider website. This is our identity provider. Now usually on the social provider, the user will be presented with a screen saying, this news website wishes to access your identity, typically your name, perhaps your email address, your friends list, your friends of friends, your dog's name, etc. This is known as the consent dialog. If you allow this, the news website gets to know your identity and this is how OAuth becomes a pseudo authentication protocol. There are a couple of problems though. First, applications on the internet are notorious for asking for way too many permissions in the consent dialog and users blindly click OK without understanding the ramifications of the permissions being asked for. Secondly, the original goal of finding who the user was, their identity, has no well-defined standard on where to find this information in the OAuth protocol. While the first problem is not a protocol or a technology issue, the second problem is what OpenID Connect intends to address. A big advantage of OAuth and OpenID Connect is that they are designed from the ground up to work across numerous different kinds of applications and platforms. Now let's talk about OpenID Connect. OpenID Connect is an authentication extension built on top of OAuth 2 protocols. While OAuth 2 generally focuses on the authorization of the client to the resource server, OIDC puts the client first and standardizes the information provided to the client by the authorization server. Standardization is good because now each client understands where to find the relevant information, which is the ID token and the user info endpoint. This is a standard. So as long as the identity provider supports the OIDC standard, this greatly simplifies the job of the client because it promotes code reuse and eliminates guesswork. The major contribution here to the standards is the ID token and the user info endpoint, which both provide standardized information about the user to the client. When working with OpenID Connect, you will hear the names of certain tokens. Here are the tokens you need to know about. First, the ID token is what contains the user's identity. This token is what a client receives from the authorization server, and the client uses this token to get basic information about the user, who the user is. Second, the access token. The access token is what lets you access a web API securely, and this is generally short-lived. A few minutes, an hour, not days or months. 
The refresh token, on the other hand, is what lets you get new access tokens. Say in the instance when an old access token has expired or you need new access tokens for a new API. Refresh tokens are longer lived and they don't need the identity provider to show a login user interface to the end user. Now there is a lot more to learn about these protocols and how Azure AD implements them. I welcome you on a journey through the various videos we have put together taking you through the paces of all the details around these protocols and the various features Azure AD has to support you and Contoso in your identity journey. Let's get buckled up and ready to fly.